Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna to be doing a quick video because I've been getting a lot of direct messages on either Instagram or some people just uh, making comments on some of my videos asking about the bar holder that you see behind me right now. So let's just jump right into it. I'm gonna show you guys how I have mine arranged and then I'm gonna give you some general tips and tricks for when you decide to make your own. So here is the barbell rack itself. Uh, this is kind of just the top down view. And I have this arranged uh, basically just to accommodate as many bars as I could possibly get on the rack. Uh, there, this has been kind of a revolving thing and not each bar has its own spot, but there are a couple bars that do have their spot in the rack. For instance, the safety squat bar, this is where the safety squat bar lives. Uh, it lives right here because it's mounted close enough that the pad can actually swing past this corner you can see right here so it comes off and it swings past that corner what that does is it enables me to be able to rock this out of the way to gain access to the bar that's right here so that's where I keep my operator bar and as you can see it swings out of the way uh, an additional consideration I had to take was whether or not it would clear when I pull down my attic door which it does just barely other than that the only bar that has its own spot is actually this bar here the reason it has its own spot is because it has to be able to fit and it's a little bit wider than your standard barbell the nice part is I had a couple bars I had these DB15s and they needed a place to live and it just happens to work out really nicely to put them right next to that bar there i have a top mounting bracket that you can see here i have the mid mounting bracket which actually only holds one bar which is the curl bar and i have the bottom mounting bracket which is kind of the business end of this whole rack but that's pretty much it so this thing can handle you know, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten bars. Uh, what I like, what I like about this kind of amount versus like a gun mount is that I can stick more bars in this amount of space and actually have everything accessible. So if you ever watch videos where people have a lot of barbells and they're stacked in a gun rack, they very quickly climb higher and higher. And uh, so like there's some people like Coop from Garage Gym Reviews. Now obviously, really nice barbell collection, uh, but he actually has to climb his gun rack to get to some of the higher bars, which is fine, like that's fine. But this method here leaves everything accessible. Other than that, my only other barbell storage is this one here. And it's mainly for log, a Saxon bar, uh, the trap bar, uh, a little piece of junk, 25 pounder, and my log. That's pretty much all it gets used for. But again, here is the DIY version. I really like it. It is super accessible. I also have small children. Uh, because I have small children, I really wanted this rack to be secure. Like I didn't want someone to be able to come up and just like pull this barbell out of the rack. And so I did an addition. I added this strap here and it's just Velcro. And it's just a little bit of extra, but you can pull on this thing pretty hard and you won't have any issues with any of these bars popping out. So again, that's the overall of the rack itself. So now I'm just gonna give you guys kind of like what you need in order to make this rack happen for you at home. All right, so this is pretty much everything you need to actually make this project uh, work. Uh, you're gonna need, this is two inch Schedule 40 PVC. This is actually all I have left. I've built a couple of these bar holders and I'm still working off the same piece. Um, the nice part about two inch schedule 40 is that inside diameter is two inches. The outside sleeve diameter on a barbell is two inches. More on that later. You're gonna need a saw. So this is just like an old back saw that I have. Uh, this is what I use. It cuts PVC nicely and it cuts wood really nicely. Uh, so for those of you carpenters out there, I'm sorry. I know that's not what the saw is for. I don't care. 
Uh, so these are just some wood screws. I'm gonna show you what I ended up using on mine. This is just all that I had. This would work just fine. This will be used to attach the PVC to the backer board. We'll get to that. You're obviously gonna need a tape measure, something to write with. This is a two inch hole saw. Uh, I had to go buy this extra because my initial hole saw kit uh, only came with, I think it's like inch and a half, um, and I needed the two inch. And again, that's because barbell sleeves are two inches. So you're gonna need a two inch hole saw. Here's where your options come in. You can either use, this is just a one by four. I think a one by four would work just fine. Uh, plus it would, you know, maybe look nicer if you took your time with it. And then laugh with me if you will, but this is a, uh, this is from a little kid's bed slat. So I had a uh, bed I had to take apart uh, because I have children and I have just a ton of bed slats sitting up there. Bed slats are one by three material for this particular bed. And so it works perfectly for this. All right, so I'm gonna get straight into how mine's put together and then I'm gonna show you how to put this together for you. So basically what we have is we have our support board and our support board, now I was telling you my wood screw is a little bit different. So these are the screws and brackets I used. You can find these at like a hardware store. I don't remember how much they are. They're from Stanley, or at least this particular one is from Stanley. It works pretty well. And then you're just gonna be cutting a notch out of that PVC pipe and attaching it to the one by three. Uh, and then down here, there's a couple things you have to anticipate. One, you have to anticipate the thickness of the board because you're gonna want the barbell to stand straight up and down. If you, we'll get to that. So. Down here on mine, I had some molding that was going around the bottom of the garage. So I had to account for that molding when it came to drilling the holes. Uh, for mine, it ended up being that if I wanted it to be exactly the same up there as it is right here, um, I only had to go like, I think it was like five eighths of an inch back. So five eighths of an inch to the edge, which means that it's an inch and five eighths to the center because it's a two inch bar. Uh, this is a two by four that I used for mine. You don't have to use a two by four. And then I need a piece of horse stall matting that you can cut to go underneath. That way, I like how my daughter's thing is broken. Uh, but basically that horse stall matting allows you to have a cushioning material for the barbell to sit on. All right, so the first step that you gotta do is one, figure out how many barbells you got and you gotta figure out your hole spacing. Your hole spacing is gonna vary for the bottom holes based on the type of barbell, unless you can get a spacing like mine where you're able to throw a couple DB15s to accommodate a Swiss bar, but I don't know what your setup is at home. So what I would recommend doing is to actually lay your barbells out on the ground. Now I just got one on the ground here, but actually lay your barbells out and see, see what kind of a pattern that you want them in. And that way you can measure and basically remember that you're measuring to the center and you're just measuring your spacing and that top board and the bottom board have to line up exactly to have your spacing. It's really not that difficult to do. You just got to be methodical and kind of like give it some time and actually think about what you want your setup to look like. Uh, try to accommodate like safety squat bars, you know, moving the handles in and out so that you can actually put bars where the handles go. Or if you don't want to do that, don't do that but it takes up a lot of space if you don't do it that way. So for the way I'm gonna do this one, this is going to be my bottom board. So it's gonna sit like this. And then this is gonna end up being my top board. So it's gonna sit on the upper sleeve and the barbell's gonna rest on it. Because the barbell's gonna rest on this, it needs a way to stand up, which is where the PVC pipe comes in. So my first step is to actually cut the PVC pipe appropriately for how thick the board is. My personal opinion on this is to make it as big as possible. Uh, this is one by three material-ish, so it's actually five eighths by two and just over, like two and nine sixteenths, just over two and nine sixteenths. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to measure two and nine sixteenths to make it as big as possible. And I'm gonna cut that. 
Now, if you have a chop saw, you can cut this using like a compound miter saw or something like that. And that would work just fine. Uh, there's nothing wrong with using power tools. Uh, I just figured, because I don't want to get in trouble for like safety or something, uh, just use hand tools. So those are two and nine sixteenths, and made up nicely with that. The next step is to cut a notch. Uh, there's really no size requirement for the notch. PVC is a pretty flexible product. Uh, the tricky part is just getting it straight up and down. So basically what you want, I'll just draw it on here, is you want to cut out a V-notch that's maybe about one to one and a half inches. Something that's wide enough so it's easy for the barbell to get in and out, but not so thin that uh, it doesn't allow the barbell to actually go in. This is kind of what I'd recommend as far as a setup goes for cutting the notch out of your PVC. So what I've done is I've clamped, which I guess you need a clamp if you're gonna do this, I've clamped the PVC pipe to the board pretty tight uh, on the inside and then I've got my lines there drawn and what this does is it gives me something to sit on to hold the material without me having to put my fingers right next to the saw. What you, you'll want to keep the piece clamped as close as possible to where you're making the cut. That way it doesn't start to vibrate on you. So just move it when you need to. The big thing here is just like don't cut yourself to a point that this is a bad decision. <clears throat> And there you go. So there's your notch cut out reasonably safely, and you can test it by trying to throw it on the barbell. Then you give it a quick test by just slipping it on the barbell, and it should just snap in. Maybe not the straightest right there, but that's okay. Uh, pulling it back out is not a good representation of how easily it'll come off, just as a heads up. So if this is slop, if this seems tight to you when you snap it on, it probably isn't as tight as you think. And in my opinion, I'd rather be more secure than less secure. So the next step is to take this and attach it to, uh, I'm gonna just call it the header board, uh, the top board. And that's as simple as you're gonna need a drill bit. So a couple tools I forgot to mention in the beginning, you are going to need uh, like a basic drill bit set. You're gonna need a power drill and we're gonna use those to attach that PVC to this. Something really quick on this, before you get started with drilling holes, with attaching things, uh, you can cut these out all you want. Before you actually start attaching anything, you need to actually measure out how your barbells are going to lay on this. And you need to make sure that you're very accurate in how you measure. For my barbells, the way I have the cups all laid out is that everything is four inches on center. So my first one comes in one Sorry. My first one comes in two inches. And so my first mark is at the two inch mark. And that's gonna be the center of my first cup holder thingy. So four inches later is six inches. After that is another four inches to 10. And you just continue that for as many barbells as you're planning on mounting to this thing. After that, take your pieces that you've cut lay them down so that you can just see the very back of it and you're just going to make if you have the, the brass fitting that i have up there then you're going to lay that on the back here and you're going to mark your holes because you're going to need to drill those holes if you're just using screws like these wood screws here which this works just fine that brass fitting just was a little bit more secure 
you're just going to have to space apart. If you're not using those, just space it apart, you know, kind of evenly on the back side, straight up and down. And then find a drill bit of the appropriate diameter to allow this screw to pass through here. You don't want the threads to engage on this. You only want the threads to engage in the wood. So if anything, choose a bit that is a tiny bit bigger than the shank of the screw, but not bigger than the head of the screw. Pop that into your drill. Drill a couple holes. So, goes through on its own without being screwed in. That's what you want. After that, what you want to do is take these screws out. You want to lay it as perfectly as you can over that mark. And take your pencil and mark exactly where those holes are onto the wood. Like that. Go back down to a smaller drill bit because you want to drill a pilot hole so it doesn't split the wood. But you don't want one so big that it takes away all the threads. And you're ready to attach your first holder. This is the step that if you were going to have the Velcro straps that go around, you would just insert that Velcro strap. You, you can buy this stuff. It's like the stuff I have is one inch 3M brand or Velcro brand. I don't know. It's, it's one inch Velcro. Go buy it at Lowe's, Home Depot. It's pretty cheap. And it basically fits in between the screws going around the back of the PVC pipe piece. So if you want that extra security, especially if you got kids, you know, and if your kids are anything like mine, you bet they come out here and yank on the barbells. You just want to screw this in, and again, you want to screw it in so that it's tight, but that it doesn't strip out. You can even run a little test fit if you want. One of the things that gets brought up is that this potentially could mar up the backside of the barbell, which is 100% true. Uh, there's a couple different workarounds on this. You can countersink the hole if you have a countersink bit. Uh, for mine, I just have mine out and I have yet to have any actual marring occur. Uh, and that's what this one looks like. So it is touching. Not gonna not tell you that. Like for this particular one, these probably aren't the best wood screws, but you get the idea. Uh, but just countersink it so that the screw heads are flush. Put a piece of electrical tape over that if you want to. Uh, but like I said, mine are exposed to the metal and mine have yet to really uh, cause any marring on the barbell sleeves. But that's mine, that's my situation, not yours. So the second thing you wanna do is you wanna figure out how far off the wall you gotta space. And remember we came in two inches to the center on our first bottom piece. So it's two inches in, make your first hole, then it's six, 10, again, because mine is two inches from the end, and then four inches on center all the way through. The second thing you want to do is figure out how far off the wall you want the center of the uh, drill bit to be. That's going to be based on your environment. So basically what you're measuring is the thickness of this material plus the PVC pipe at the top which for this particular one is exactly one inch. So exactly one inch from the top, which means that if you have no other trim, you want the edge of the barbell to be one inch. It's a two inch barbell, so you want to go two inches. So it'd be two inches from the end. Is the center of your hole, which is not center on the board. But if you go two inches there, you have exactly one inch 
on this side. I hope that that makes sense. If that's confusing, I'm sorry. Uh, but you don't, basically what you're doing is you're not wanting your barbell to be canted one way or the other. You want it to be straight up and down. So the next step is to drill that hole. Again, moved it over so that I wouldn't pop it into my rubber floor here. Basically, there's my two-inch hole, and that's what the barbell is going to slip inside of. Make sure it fits. You don't want it to be right on it tight. You want to have a little bit of play to make it easy to get it out of the, the actual rack. So this is going to go down. This goes on the top. And if you look, if you do this correctly, before you put anything around there, these holes should line up perfectly, which they do. That's pretty much it. So after that, what you do, so you do as many as you need, you make as many of these as you need, you figure out the height that you need this top part to be at. I'll give you a hint, lay on all your bars, measure from, <laughs> measure from the bottom of the bar to there. So mine is based on my shortest barbell. So my shortest barbell has this thing right at the bottom and my tallest one is all the way up. At the, I'm sorry opposite of that. My shortest one is basically it barely grabs into the holder and my tallest barbell actually has the sleeve butted right up against it like this. But I'm telling you just lay out your barbells get a good plan of attack on how yours is going to go. I can't really show how to do this because it's based on how many barbells you have and the size shape and complexity of your barbell situation. All right, so pretty much that's that's the video. So it's as simple as that. So just be careful, I guess. When I say careful, I don't mean like from a safety perspective. I mean, be careful from a safety perspective, but it's more of just be methodical, lay everything out and make sure you're measuring like two to three times. Don't mess this up. It's a pretty easy project, but you just gotta be careful in the way that you execute it. Again, here's my holder. Uh, I've had to do some additions in the past uh, this was actually to accommodate the Rogue Safety Squat Barbell. I just used a Craig jig basically to extend this up and had to remove some material. Um, I've since sold that barbell, but it still works just fine. Um, and there's other ways that you can church up this barbell holder. So one of the ideas I've thought of doing in the past is putting like plywood, like a plywood backing. And if you do that, you can do like a logo or something. So if you want to put a logo behind your barbell holder, uh, that's pretty awesome. Uh, the only other thing that you got to make sure you do, and another, another reason that the plywood is such a cool idea is because like you got to mount these things into studs, right? And so here's one of my stud mountings right here. And again, that screw goes straight into the stud. There's another one here. And this one actually goes into this metal trim and that popped off when I did some modifications to it. But over here, because Texas studs are like 24 inches on center, there's actually no, nothing holding it. Uh, it's, it's still secure because it has all the other screws, but if I put plywood back there, for instance, it would tighten everything up and give the screw something to grab into, and then I would attach the plywood to the studs. So not only do you get the capability of putting a logo, but you also make it a little bit less un insecure. But anyways, that's my video. I appreciate, appreciate you guys watching. If you decide to make this, go ahead and comment down below. If you see a way that you think you can do better, comment down below, please. I'm always open to your feedback. Uh, sometimes a lot of things you guys bring up is uh, it's pretty smart. Like I feel bad I didn't think about it. But I appreciate you watching. Please subscribe to my channel. Please watch some other videos. And I'll see you guys next time in my next video, whether it's a DIY or an equipment review.